Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today's going to be a departure from looking at all those big, fancy, expensive uh, fishing reels that are out there and how to, how to take them apart and service them. And we're actually going to go to the other side of the spectrum. A value-priced reel that probably is not used very much, but uh, serves to teach people how to fish and uh, to provide occasional entertainment when, uh, when those folks want to go fishing. And uh, this is a reel I, I normally wouldn't see in my shop. It's a reel that came as a batch of uh, fishing reels that I uh, purchased uh, along the way. We might even make this one a giveaway uh, at a later date. But uh, this one is a South Bend. It's called the South Bend Fishing Pal. It probably came on a pole. And the, uh, the, the whole idea of today is to, to show you that regardless of what the reel is, the reel should be serviced. If the reel is serviced, the reel will last a long time, regardless of price paid, and it will always do what you set uh, it to do when you first made that purchase. So if we were thinking at the time that this was going to, to be used by a son, niece, nephew, uh, local block friend or whatever, maybe let's just give an age group, say 10 years old, it was going to be the first one. You weren't going to care if the uh, reel got dragged into the pond or dropped off the boat or wherever your fishing was from. Uh, you know what? It's still going to work for that uh, that demographic, if you will. If uh, that if you bought the reel for that and all of a sudden you've moved on to bigger game fish and more sophisticated fishing techniques rather than just maybe a cork and a hook, well, maybe, uh, maybe you've moved up scale in terms of the reels. But the reels will always do what you purchase them to do. And if you keep them maintained, well, they can serve generation upon generation. So I wanted to give you a look into how this reel was made, talk a little bit about why this one would be less expensive, or a value reel, if you will, and uh, you know, what makes differences in those, and more importantly, how to keep this reel fishing. Because that's kind of the idea here, is to give these reels a second chance. All right, we're going to start by taking off the... the uh, pieces and parts, getting underneath it, and servicing it. One of the things I like to do right away on these older reels that have been sitting around is put some penetrating oil into the seams of the bale. I want to make sure that these bales go ahead and snap nice. I did notice that this bale is out of shape, and sometimes just putting pressure on the one side, I'm going to go off camera for a second here, just putting pressure on the one side will help restore the, the shape of the rail, the bell. And uh, other times you need to uh, to re-straighten that and re-bend it. I think we're going to have to do that here. Let's see if we can get this off. We talked about what makes a reel expensive or what makes a reel less expensive. Here's one of them. They're using steel screws here. You can tell they're rusted and uh, not using uh, stainless steel. So a lot of it is in the material. Your case may be plastic. Your uh, your um, spool may be plastic. It, it all adds up in the end. Okay, so you can see that we're out of alignment here. This will not snap easily if this is not resting in the area where the bell uh, attaches. So first I'm going to straighten this up a little bit if I can. It's a wire. You can bend it back. I'm getting a little bit closer here. We almost have we almost have the general shape of it as well. So you just want to be careful with these. Sometimes these wires get a bit finicky and snap. So just be careful as you do this. I guess I've been doing it enough now that I'm less afraid of it, but it can snap. All right, one more pull here that should do it. Yeah, I, I think that's a whole lot better than it was both in terms of the look of the arc, as well as taking the tension out of that bale. One more, I'll just press it in there. So these bales tend to get beat up, particularly with novice users. The rods can get dropped on the ground. The, sometimes they get so excited that they caught the fish that the, the rod and pole go flying in another direction. And that's understandable. Again, these types, types of reels oftentimes are for 
uh, beginners. All right, let's see if that makes a better snap. Oh yeah, it makes a whole better snap. Now, another thing is the engineering. You do not have an in internal trip on this. You have what I call the bang bail. So as this thing comes around, it's going to hit this post over here and that post is going to trip it. So with that little bit of lubrication, that little bit of bending, we now have a functioning bail. Let's go ahead and take this spool off. When you're doing something like this, you should remove the line. You don't know the age of the line, so it's better to just remove the line and uh, not be embarrassed when the line breaks on a, on a fish uh, that you might have wanted to, to keep. This is a sealed drag system. The drags are in there and then the seal gets pressed over the top. You cannot remove them. Don't try to remove them. Underneath this we have a little click tongue coming off here. And that click tongue is going to go against the studs on the back of this. It's kind of unusual. This almost looks like well, a, a spinning wheel, if you will, right? And you're waiting for the thing to land on your number. And here's that little indicator piece right here that's going to make the click. That's going to let you know when the line is going out backwards with the drag. Right now, that's not doing a very good job there, so you maybe we have to tighten that down. All right, there is no rotor nut. That means it's connected underneath. And uh, I'm, before I go too far, I'm going to take off the handle. That just screws into the main gear. And it looks like we, uh, we only have one rusty screw holding this side plate in. Hopefully, these come out. So that's the other advantage to servicing those frequently. Even though they are rusted, if you can keep these... Uh, oiled, you can keep them lubricated, then you won't have an issue there when it comes time to uh, reset. All right, that one's going to go in my arch tray. Now I should be able to remove this. So this has a little tag up top and a single piece below. This has a very tried and true uh, engineering style behind it. This one's been around for years, if not decades. But you know what? It works. Let's show you how that works. You have a main gear. You have a cross wind block. You have a pin holding the axle in. And you have a pinion gear that is part of the rotor. So let's show you how to take this apart and give it a quick service here. I want to make sure that my anti-reverse dog is off. Okay, the, the pin is removed. And when I take my pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray. I use that to organize the parts that have come off. And I also use that to let me know where they are, where it's time to reinstall. The axle shaft came out of the top. The cross wind block comes off. And I think this is typical of what you will find if you find a reel like this at a uh, yard sale or, or somewhere. And that is that it hasn't been serviced. These wheels are almost viewed as being disposable. And again, you're not going to go find a technician somewhere to um, to service it. The fee is going to be well in excess of uh, the value of the reel. But you can do it yourself. Spend a few minutes like I'm doing here. Keep this reel working for a long time to come. Hey, you never know when that next generation is going to be ready to fish. And it always helps to have a reel standing by just for that time. I removed that U-clip and now we can remove the rotor. And once you take the rotor out, the pinion gear is clear so you can push the main gear out. And this is your case. This is a, a rather simple anti-reverse, but it does work. And uh, we want to do, just like we would do if this was a $200 or $300 reel, we want to clean the case out. So we were talking materials before. The uh, gearing on this is uh, what we would commonly call pot metal. There are no um, burrings in this reel. The case serves as the bushings. So you've really eliminated a lot of pieces and parts that make the reel turn smoother and easier and last longer. But again, these are these are kind of designed, I call them cabin reels. They're kind of designed for the person that's going to be at the cabin, at the lake, on the boat, whatever, that hasn't been fishing much, 
may never go fishing again, uh, but uh, is there if they want to want to use it. All right, I'm using a bristle brush to pull the old grease out of the main gear. I only use fishing oil grease. Once I've checked the teeth on this one, make sure that it's all there. I want to re-grease. And as I mentioned, depending on whether this uh, reel works fine when I'm done with the service, I'll probably just give this away to a channel viewer. There's currently a promotion going on out there. I'm giving away a reel that was dragged up from the bottom of the ocean. And uh, if you go back, find that video. And I, th I think it's a video that said, look what I caught. And uh, find that video. You still have time to enter and uh, win that one. So it's just an eclectic bunch of stuff that I decide to give away. And uh, if, you, uh, if you enjoy these types of videos, if you'd like to win that thing, go ahead and do that. And then, uh, well, stay tuned because this will probably be featured as a reel of the day. And uh, once that happens, I will probably put a little blurb on there that says that I'm going to give it away. It's time to enter the drawing for this reel. Okay, we're going to pull that down. Just like we did the other one, we're going to get the dirt out there. And there is dirt in these. You can see how it's falling onto the paper towel. And I use that paper towel because I don't want the, the dirt and debris to, to transfer over to my bench and uh, get caught up in the next reel I service. Again, no trip levers underneath here, no ball bearings, just a pretty simple pinning gear attached to the rotor. And this has been done for a long, long time from an engineering perspective. Okay, we're going to take our rotor and put that back onto the reel. I'm going to mesh that rotor in with the main gear. Make sure it pulls all the way down. And grab that little U-clip. It holds that in place and insert that in there with the assembly. Now the, the side plate will keep that tight. All right, wipe off your axle shaft. A little bit of grease. And we'll insert the axle shaft through the top, through the pinion gear. And we'll leave it just short of your crosswind block. Now, I didn't tell you to take pictures on this one, but you should. This is not a symmetrical crosswind block. So if you didn't remember, does this go high or this go low? Well, a picture would help you to identify that if you've taken them at critical points along your service path. And we'll do this. You want to bring the hold in that axle shaft down so that it meets the hole in the crosswind block and you can insert the pin. That's not the pin. That's the side plate screw. How do you like that? All right, the pin is in. We can come over here. I'm going to put our handle on. I'm going to oil the handle where the seam is. And also oil the handle through the top. And this is how your reel will work. And you know what? It's a nice smooth operating reel. It's not the most complicated, but you don't need complicated. Okay. Put our side plate on. There's a notch in here where that little part of the side plate goes. Line it up with the back. And I like to put a drop of oil onto these old screws. That way it'll kind of prevent it from uh, rusting. And we'll put it right back in where we got that from. Again, this reel has dry washers that are pressed in, so probably, I'm going to guess they're probably Teflon washers because they don't require service. And uh, well, we'll see if this little thing broke off or if that thing actually does hit those bumps. Bring our top down. Drag adjuster button. Well, if you have a question on this reel or any reel, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, maybe you want to know a little bit more about the history. Yes, South Bend is referencing South Bend, Indiana. South Bend was not a manufacturer of reels, 
Uh, they were always uh, using the brand, but for the most part, the reels were made by others. The early reels were, a lot of those reels were made by Shakespeare and Bronson, I believe Bronson. And uh, well, today they're made abroad as trade reels. Okay, just want to clip that out of the way. So let's give it a try. All right, you know what? It's holding. Bell is snapping. I want a reel like this. That's still a hard bang when you come across there. On a reel like this, when I cast it, I do prefer to open it up for casting and to close it manually. This is a reel that you can do that on. Some reels you can't. But that will save the uh, wear and tear of coming over here and banging into that all the time. So that's it. There you go. It's a South Bend reel. Probably was sold in a rod and reel combination. It was the XTC-70R, and it was called Fishing Pal. And again, we have a, a reel that uh, has an anti-reverse feature to it, and uh, an anti-reverse override. And it's stopping now. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that. Just remember, whatever tackle you have needs to be maintained, whether it's lures, whether it's inexpensive reels or whether it's the most expensive uh, crown jewel of your collection, keep them serviced and they will keep you fishing. Before I leave, I want to thank our police, fire, safety, rescue, and all the people involved in uh, keeping us safe. And I want to thank you for watching and for making this channel what it is. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.